It's been 100 years. Today, we're serving up 100 years of fast food. Which chain started it all? Who came up with the drive through When did fast food make it into the dictionary? Well, get ready for a supersized portion of fast food history, seasoned with a pinch of nostalgia and a dash of trivia that'll leave you hungry for more. For the next 100 years! The 1920s. I'm doing the 1920s. Fast food in the roaring oh. 1920s was sizzling with innovation and flavor, shaping the landscape of American dining for decades to come. The hot dog, a quintessential American treat, took center stage during this decade. While its origins stretch back to the 1860s, the 1920s marked a pivotal moment in its journey to stardom, largely thanks to Nathan Handworker's Coney Island hot dog stand. Nathan, armed with just $300 from his life savings and a secret recipe courtesy of his wife, Ida, set up shop, selling these delectable francs for a mere five cents. The affordable price and savory simplicity of the hot dog struck a chord with New Yorkers, setting off a culinary revolution that would soon sweep the nation. In an era marked by economic prosperity and a fast-paced lifestyle, the hot dog's affordability and deliciousness made it a hit. Well, the hot dog. But what about fast food chains, you ask? In 1921, Walter Anderson and Billy Ingram opened the very first White Castle location in Wichita, Kansas. This groundbreaking restaurant wasn't just the first of its kind, it laid the groundwork for what would become America's most beloved fast food, hamburgers. Anderson's stroke of genius was inventing the hamburger bun and implementing an assembly line approach to cooking fast food. This efficient system not only delivered scrumptious sliders in record time, but also ensured uniformity in taste and quality, something that would define the term fast food to this day. But White Castle didn't stop there. It introduced the concept of a fast food supply chain, delivering everything from meat to buns, paper goods, and other essentials to all of its restaurants. I'd get married tomorrow in a White Castle. They even pioneered the look and construction of fast food joints, and their construction division churned out prefabricated restaurant buildings, making expansion a breeze. This groundbreaking concept spread like wildfire across the Midwest, with White Castle expanding its presence giving birth to an era of accessible, speedy burger consumption. Competitors eagerly jumped on the bandwagon, inspired by White Castle's success, leading to a competitive landscape that fueled innovation and diversity in the fast food scene. This marked the official beginning of the fast food era in America. And it's not going anywhere anytime soon. The 1930s Call you back, 1930s. A turbulent and transformative decade for America, the 1930s and its impact on fast food was no exception. As the nation grappled with the Great Depression, fast food continued to evolve, adapting to the economic challenges and shifting cultural landscape. One standout star of this era was the humble drive-in restaurant. Those roadside eateries where patrons could order and enjoy their meals from the comfort of their cars gained immense popularity during the 1930s. Kirby's Pig Stand, a Texas-based chain, is often credited with being one of the pioneers of the drive-in concept. It was here that the car hop service was born, where servers would take orders and deliver food directly to the customer's vehicles. I eat lunch in the car now. This innovation not only provided convenience, but also created a unique dining experience that appealed to a car-loving nation. Meanwhile, the 1930s marked the official founding of a fast food giant that would later become a global sensation. In 1930, Harlan Sanders, better known as Colonel Sanders, started serving his famous fried chicken in a service station in Corbin, Kentucky. Although it would take a few more decades for Kentucky Fried Chicken to achieve worldwide fame, this marked the beginning of a culinary legend that would redefine the fast food landscape. I'm KFC, baby. You don't mess with the Colonel's recipe. Adding a unique twist to the fast food business model, Howard Johnson played his part in the 1930s by introducing the concept of restaurant franchising. An ice cream parlor owner by trade, he came up with the ingenious idea of permitting other restaurant operators to use his name and restaurant concept for a fee. This was the beginning of restaurant chains starting to dot the American landscape. American children are fattened more efficiently than any other children in the world. The 1940s. 
You look like a 1940s movie star. This decade brought with it significant shifts in the fast food landscape, driven by wartime rationing, technological advancements, and post-war economic growth. As America was deeply involved in World War II during the early 40s, the fast food industry had to adapt to the challenges and restrictions of the time. One notable consequence of wartime rationing was the temporary disappearance of certain ingredients. Burger chains like White Castle and their competitors faced shortages of meat and other key supplies. To keep their businesses afloat, some restaurants turned to alternative proteins, including soy-based meat substitutes, which were introduced as Victory Burgers. You must feel like a real winner! These wartime adaptations demonstrated the industry's resilience and determination to continue serving Americans during difficult times. The decade also saw Richard and Maurice McDonald kick off the fast food revolution by opening a barbecue drive-in back in 1940. This simple restaurant would go on to define the words fast food and become the biggest restaurant franchise in the world. Drawing inspiration from Henry Ford's pioneering assembly line, the brothers embarked on a journey to streamline the dining experience. In 1948, they overhauled their restaurant concept, opting for a more efficient model that continuously churned out a simplified menu. This innovation was a game changer as it meant customers no longer had to twiddle their thumbs while waiting for their orders. Why did your finger just fall off? But perhaps one of the most groundbreaking developments of the 40s was the birth of the drive through concept. In 1948, Harry and Esther Snyder unveiled their masterpiece in Baldwin Park, California, the first In-N-Out Burger. Unlike earlier drive-in models where car hops took orders, In-N-Out introduced a revolutionary twist. Here, patrons could simply pull up to a window inside the store, relay their orders through an intercom, and voila, receive their food without ever leaving their cars. This innovative drive through concept quickly caught on like wildfire, revolutionary the fast food experience. It paved the way for a new era of convenience, allowing busy customers to grab a quick bite without the hassle of stepping out of their vehicles. You're allowed to eat in the car? The 1950s. I was working nights at a 1950s-themed diner, which back then was just the diner. Often dubbed the golden age of fast food, the 1950s brought a wave of innovation and cultural shifts that left an indelible mark on the fast food landscape. With the post-war economic boom and the rise of suburban living, fast food experienced unprecedented growth and became an integral part of American culture. In 1951, the term fast food was officially recognized by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. One of the most iconic moments of the 1950s was the birth of the modern fast food franchise. In 1955, Ray Kroc, a milkshake machine salesman, stumbled upon a small, thriving burger joint owned by the McDonald Brothers in San Bernardino, California. He stole it! Recognizing the potential of their efficient and standardized operation, he convinced them to let him franchise their brand. This partnership gave birth to the McDonald's we know today. The introduction of McDonald's marked the shift from localized, independent fast food establishments to nationwide chains, setting the stage for the fast food empire's expansion. The McDonald's model was based on consistency, speed, and affordability, turning fast food into a convenient and reliable viable dining option for the growing suburban population. Their speedy service system allowed cooks to whip up burgers in half the time it took at a sit-down restaurant and sell them for half the price. A burger was 15 cents, a cheeseburger was 19 cents, and fries cost a dime. It's clean, it's cheap, it's fast. In the 1950s, drive-ins also continued to thrive, with car culture at its zenith. Car hops on roller skates became a nostalgic image of the era, as diners can enjoy burgers, fries, and shakes from the comfort of their automobiles. A&W, founded in 1919, was a notable player in the drive-in scene, gaining nationwide popularity with its signature root beer floats and iconic glass mugs. The 50s also saw the introduction of fast food menu innovations. Burger King, which started as Insta Burger King in 1953, introduced the Whopper in 1957, catering to those who craved a bigger, more indulgent burger. This move set the stage for menu diversification and competition among fast food giants. Wars begun. First time here? Well, what are you waiting for? Take a quick second to hit that subscribe button. Everyone else is doing it. 
Thank you! The 1960s. Here we are. The 1960s. The 1960s were a period of immense cultural upheaval, and fast food continued to ride the wave of change. Fast food chains were not just places to satisfy hunger, but had become symbols of convenience, innovation, and pop culture. One of the most iconic moments of the 1960s was the expansion of the mighty McDonald's empire. In 1961, the Golden Arches opened Hamburger University in Illinois, an establishment dedicated to training its employees employees in the art of fast food service. By 1963, the company had achieved a remarkable milestone, selling its one billionth hamburger. 1963 saw the chain introduce its now-famous mascot, Ronald McDonald, although this Ronald was a far cry from the McD's clown we know today. Nobody likes scary clowns! The Golden Arches also first released the Big Mac in 1967 as a direct competitor to BK's Whopper. And the price of the original Big Mac? How about 45 cents? They also continued to refine their speedy service system, ensuring that customers could get their beloved burgers and fries with lightning-fast efficiency. However, the 60s weren't just about burgers. Pizza also took center stage as modern pizza delivery joints rose to prominence. Pizza Hut, which had its beginnings in 1958, quickly became the reigning monarch of the pizza business throughout the 1960s. Their success was fueled by a savvy and aggressive marketing campaign shoving pizza in your gob like it owed you money. By 1966, the number of Pizza Hut franchises had already ballooned to an impressive 145, marking the chain's dominance in the pizza market. Another notable newcomer to the pizza scene was Domino's, who would take pizza delivery to the next level in the decades to come. The 1960s also marked the international expansion of fast food giants. Australia's fast food market took its first steps in 1968 with the arrival of American franchises, including McDonald's and KFC. These iconic brands quickly captured the hearts and appetites of the Australian population, setting the stage for their enduring presence in the land down under. From the land down under? 1970s. We're in the 1970s. In the 1970s, chains that primarily focused on lunch and dinner menus realized they were missing out on an important meal, breakfast. Jack in the Box had already taken a bold step in this direction by introducing the first breakfast sandwich in 1969. However, it was McDonald's that truly revolutionized the fast food breakfast scene. In 1972, they unveiled the Egg McMuffin. By 1977, McDonald's restaurants nationwide were dishing out not just Egg McMuffin, but a complete breakfast menu, including hot cakes and crispy hash browns, setting a trend that many other chains would later follow. It wasn't long before the drive through breakfast became a part of the daily routine for many Americans catering to their need for a quick and convenient morning meal. I need breakfast, stat! While McDonald's was making waves with their breakfast offerings, they faced stiff competition from another fast food titan, Wendy's. This fast food darling, introduced to the United States market at the end of 1969, rapidly ascended to prominence throughout the 70s. By 1978, Wendy's had achieved the remarkable feat of opening 1,000 restaurants. Wendy's distinct appeal lay in its salad bar, which enticed health-conscious diners, and its competitive pricing for burgers which undercut McDonald's by a significant margin. Besides salad bars, I also hate salad bars. This combination of affordability and choice made Wendy's an attractive option. The 1970s also saw the rise of another fast food giant, Subway. Founded in 1965, this sandwich chain started to make a significant impact during this decade. The concept of submarine sandwiches, or subs, struck a chord with consumers looking for a healthier and more customizable alternative to burgers and fries. And it was in 1978 that Domino's introduced a revolutionary concept, promising to deliver a pizza to your doorstep in under 30 minutes or it was free. The guarantee of quick pizza delivery rocketed the chain to success. There's absolutely no rush. The 1980s. To the wet and wild 1980s. The 1980s were a fast-paced and indulgent decade for the fast food industry, marked by a wave of change, innovation, and pop culture influence. Fast food in the 80s evolved to become more than just a quick meal, it became a cultural phenomenon. One notable development was the continued growth of the fast casual segment. 
This was a response to the evolving tastes of consumers who sought higher quality, fresher ingredients and a more relaxed dining experience compared to traditional fast food. Restaurants like Panera Bread, serving freshly baked bread and a variety of soups and sandwiches, exemplified this trend. The 1980s saw the dawn of a new era in fast food, one that blurred the lines between fast food and sit-down dining. They're basically the same thing. Cultural icons like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Garfield comic strip found their way onto fast food merchandise and packaging, further entrenching fast food in popular culture. While making its debut in 1979, the McDonald's Happy Meal, offering toys with children's meals, became a staple at McDonald's in the 80s, capturing the hearts of young diners and their parents alike. However, the 1980s were not without its challenges. Fast food restaurants, faced with increasing competition and a crowded market, embarked on a quest to captivate customers with larger, more satisfying portions and calorie-packed options. Many chains diversified their offerings, adding new and calorie-rich items to their menus. Even burgers grew larger as chains became desperate to keep and attract customers. Either that or my mouth is getting smaller. The 1990s. This is the 1990s. The 90s were marked by a notable focus on diversity and multicultural flavors. Chains like Taco Bell and Chipotle introduced Mexican-inspired fast food, offering burritos, tacos, and other dishes with a south-of-the-border twist. These culinary innovations resonated with consumers looking for flavors beyond the traditional burger and fries. Technological advancements such as computerized order-taking systems and efficient kitchen equipment streamlined operations and improved speed and accuracy in fast food service. A major innovation of the 90s was the introduction of value menus. Wendy's pioneered the concept of a value menu in 1989. The highest value. In response to growing competition among fast food chains vying for a share of the burger market, Wendy's leveraged the value menu as a powerful tool to attract new customers. This revolutionary menu offered nine items, including hamburgers, fries, and beverages, all priced at an enticing 99 cents. The appeal of affordable, tasty options quickly resonated with patrons, and other chains promptly followed suit, introducing their own value menus. Another notable trend was the surge in healthier menu options. The decade saw an increased emphasis on salads, grilled chicken, and other lighter fare. Hey. Is that healthy food? Consumers were becoming more health conscious, and fast food chains responded by offering choices that cater to these evolving tastes. McDonald's, for instance, introduced its popular McSalad Shakers, a novel approach to delivering salads to on-the-go customers. Starbucks also became a major player in the fast food scene. Beyond just offering hot and cold beverages, Starbucks took the lead in establishing a loyalty program that kept customers returning time and again. This early version of their loyalty program was a huge success, and by the end of the decade, they had over 3,500 stores. After just store after store. The 2000s. What should we do to prepare for Y2K? Fast food faced formidable competition during this decade most notably from the rise of fast casual dining establishments. Restaurants like Panera Bread and Chipotle redefined the dining experience by promising swift service paired with fresher and higher quality ingredients compared to traditional fast food chains. One of the notable shifts during this era was the industry's response to growing health concerns. Fast food giants began introducing healthier menu options, often in response to public pressure. Salads, snack wraps, and grilled chicken sandwiches became staples on many fast food menus. We do provide healthier options. Chains like Subway capitalized on the trend, marketing themselves as a healthier alternative by offering a variety of fresh vegetables and lean protein choices. Additionally, the 2000s marked a time when the industry embraced customization. Many chains introduced build-your-own options, allowing customers to tailor their orders to their individual tastes. This shift was driven by the desire to cater to a more discerning and diverse clientele, as people became increasingly particular about their dietary choices. The decade also saw the emergence of ethical and environmental concerns within the fast food industry. Chains like McDonald's began addressing issues related to animal welfare, sourcing sustainable ingredients, and reducing their environmental footprint. Not fast food, 
good food quickly. The explosion of technology in the 2000s also had a significant impact on the industry. The proliferation of the internet and the advent of online ordering and delivery services transformed the way people access their favorite fast food. Chains adopted online ordering platforms, making it easier than ever for customers to place their orders and have their food delivered to their doorstep. Now you have to feed me. The 2010s. I'm from 2010. The 2010s proved to be a transformative decade for the fast food industry, marked by a growing emphasis on healthier eating and sustainability. As the effects of documentaries like Super Size Me continued to linger, a cultural shift towards conscious dining and healthier choices took center stage. The concept of farm-to-table and organic ingredients also gained prominence during this decade. Fast food chains began sourcing their ingredients from local and sustainable suppliers, addressing concerns about food sourcing and environmental mental impact. Transparency in food sourcing and preparation became a key selling point as consumers increasingly sought assurance about the quality and origins of their meals. It meets me although none of it was me. The clean eating movement had a profound impact on the fast food industry, pushing it to explore healthier alternatives. In 2013, Burger King made an attempt to cater to the health-conscious crowd by introducing lower-calorie french fries. But this only lasted a year. However, fast food chains increasingly ventured into the realm of plant-based options with the introduction of items like the Impossible Burger, which provided a vegan alternative for those looking to reduce their meat consumption. In the realm of technology, the 2010s brought about a significant shift in how fast food was ordered and delivered. With instant delivery, anywhere, anytime. Mobile apps and online ordering platforms became commonplace, allowing customers to place orders and pay for their meals with ease. Delivery services such as Uber Eats and DoorDash forged partnerships with fast food chains, enabling customers to enjoy their favorite dishes from the comfort of their homes. The concept of customization reached new heights during this decade. Many fast food chains adopted the build-your-own model, allowing customers to tailor their meals to their specific preferences. The idea of personalization extended beyond just food, as fast food chains used technology and data to offer targeted promotions and rewards through loyalty programs. Prove your loyalty! We're open 24-7, so tap or click another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell. And hey, leave us a comment!